Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux, and this is a new video on a terminal. Yes, I know it's a terminal, and not everybody digs terminals. I do, and that's why we're looking at it today. So why Ghosty? Uh, because I've seen other people do videos on Ghosty. It's been very popular on YouTube fairly recently. In fact, uh, DT did a video on Ghosty a couple three weeks ago. I saw an interview with the uh, developer for Ghosty on the Primogen, and I was curious. So I wanted to take a look at it, and then I went looking for the flat pack which is not there. And that's fine. I actually prefer not to use flat packs, although, you know, I can understand the reasoning for using flat pack. I mean, after all, Debian um, 12 has been out for a year and a half. And in six months, we'll get Debian Trixie. Now, will Ghosty be part of Debian Trixie? I don't know yet. However, the more I looked at it in terms of documentation, uh, the more I thought, you know what, I still would like to try this. So I thought I'll just build it from source. And if there are other people like me that want to install uh, Ghosty, you may want to use the same method. Now, um, if you are on Arch or Nix or some of the other ones, you're fine. Uh, in terms of Ubuntu, I guess there is a package for Ubuntu. I tried it, it failed, and I would prefer to actually just use the source code myself. So this is how I would do it. So the obvious question is, why try something new? I have a perfectly good terminal. And you're right, I've been using Tilex for a very long time. But let's look at the numbers, okay? Tilex... Um, the last release was in 2023. It is now 2025. I'm guessing that it's not going to be maintained or it has it has been abandoned at this point. It was always part of the GNOME project, which is another strike if you're asking me. But regardless, um, I'm, I've, I'm still using it today. I'm just always looking for something that may be a little bit more, I don't know, in line with the future. So, um, by the way, I think that Tixis, which I have tried and I do like, um, is going to replace Tilex within the GNOME community and a good terminal, like I said, used it and impressed. Now, as far as Ghosty is concerned, all right, I wrote a bash script. Uh, it is on my, I will leave a link in the description below. It is on my GitHub if you would like to run it. Uh, it. What it will do is it will install the dependencies that you need, as well as Zig. You need Zig 13 in order to get Ghosty to run. And uh, then it will build the Ghosty package. Now, uh, Ghosty application, rather. I will say that it takes a little bit of time and we're going to find that out right now by the way while i'm thinking about it thank you very much i hit the 8,000 subscriber mark um which is far more than i ever planned to do with this channel but i am very much appreciated uh, appreciative rather of those of you that have subscribed that you have uh, thumbs up the content and those that have left uh, very kind comments um regardless let's move on i'm going to open up a terminal and I'm going to just say simply git clone https and then uh, github.com slash my name and uh, my ghosty. Okay, cool. So let's go into my ghosty. And what we're going to do, um, as I've said before, this might... This might take a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and install Ghosty right like that. It's going to ask to authenticate. And it is going to first, obviously, install the, um, uh, the required dependencies, which are a couple different uh, Debian packages. I'm pretty sure this will also work on Wayland. I'm very pretty sure. <laughs> I'm not using it on Wayland, so I wish I could say 100%, but 
but I'm pretty sure. Let's put it that way. All right, so now what it's doing is it has uh, downloaded Zig and then put it in the right spot. And now it is cloned Ghosty and is now fetching the packages necessary for it to uh, build the application. Now it is going to take, like I said, maybe a minute. All right, and so what I will do is go ahead and pause. All right, we are back and I'm done with this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close the terminal, uh, which was Tilex, by the way. And I'm gonna go to, I'm just going to a clean workspace and open up Rofi and there's Ghosty at the top of, the, uh, of my launch right here. So I'm just gonna hit enter and there it is. Now, as far as I can tell, what you're looking at is basically a default, um, it's a default theme that you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Uh, but let's go ahead and just look around the interface a little bit, all right? You can add, this would be just another tab so that you can switch between the two tabs, which is nice. Um, you can also look at the menu. So new window, new tab. You can split much like Tilex. Um, you can also split down, you can close. And this is kind of interesting. Now I'm gonna click on Terminal Inspector. This is not for me. And if you are an end user, probably not for you either. But if you are a, um, if you are a developer and you are developing for the terminal, this might be something that you wanna take a look at. So like even right here, look at the, uh, the hover point, okay? I'm just covering over um, and it shows where I am within the terminal. So like I, I said, this is not for me, you know, it would be for somebody that is a developer, um, but it's a cool feature, all right? You can also reload the configuration and you can open the configuration, okay? So here it is, the configuration, all of this is commented. So what we need to do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove everything, okay? So I'm just gonna go Control A, and delete, and we're gonna start with a blank screen. So, and now, what's my, yes, so shift and control and comma is how to reload. So I'm just gonna use it. Uh, reloaded the configuration. So a nice little pop-up to give you an indicator if, uh, if you have reloaded the config. All right, now I'm just gonna move, I'm gonna move my genie over. Uh, control, let's just move it over to, to three for a second and then let's go back to two so that I have Tilex in a full screen. Uh, sorry, Tilex, so that I could have Ghosty in a full screen. Okay, now let's, let's look at the themes. Okay, since we are end users, we're probably more interested in uh, font size and color. Okay, so the thing that I wanna look at first is Ghosty and plus list hyphen themes, okay? Now you can see everything that's available. Now what we'll do is we'll pick out a couple and take a look at them, all right? Um, there are the ones that you know, okay? And if you're looking for a, um, a, a, different, um, a different list, it's gonna be under these iTerm2 color schemes. And you can take a look and see what color schemes. Actually, I'll, I don't mind looking at it uh, this way, uh, just looking at it directly from the ghost, ghosty theme preview, okay? Now I'm gonna just list a few, all right? So I'm gonna go back over. And by the way, I'm gonna change the color. I've been in this like mode where I wanna change the color uh, view color scheme, and I'm gonna go to Cyber Sugar, okay? And that's gonna be my, my theme for right now. I'm going, um, here we go, let's, let's take a look at, let's could take a look at this. I don't, I'm just gonna pick out a couple like very, very common ones, okay? As much as I wanted to just keep it to a few, I couldn't help myself and I looked at a whole bunch and it's took, it took me a little bit of time. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. Actually, I switched out Tilex for, um, uh, for Ghosty as well. So now when I hit Super Enter, it, it's popping up. Um, why don't we change the font first? Not just the uh, style of font, which is gonna be now Sauce Code Pro Nerd, as well as the size. Um, we're gonna just go ahead and save that, and now let's reload, okay? 
and it looks like the font is changed, but not the size. That's interesting. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close and then reopen and see if that, yeah, definitely. So I wonder if that's a bug actually, okay. Um, that may be, but let's let's keep going and let's look at some of the themes. So if I just said, add Wida, all right, and then change that and now let's reload it again. You can see, actually, let's go ahead and list. All right, so you can see the color. Definitely, um, a, definitely a, a nice color. I don't know that it's for me. Uh, and while I'm here, I know that our, our guy Matt would want to see what, oh, not, not, let's not look at GitHub. Let's look at Groovebox Dark. That's what he would want to see. And then let's go ahead over here and, and there you go. That would be the Groovebox Dark theme. Um, I'll be honest with you. I have been looking at Kanagawa, but I have on my NVim or my NeoVim config for a long time now, and I'm thinking about changing it. Um, and I have been looking at Ultra Dark. Okay, so I don't know if you remember this, but this theme over here, this color scheme that I am currently using for Genie is called Cyber Sugar. And this Ultra Dark kind of reminds me of Cyber Sugar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and save that. And now when I, boom. So it has some similarities. And so this is what I'm kind of sticking with for right now. So Ultra Dark is what I'm gonna go with as far as my, um, my ghosty config. All right, so I am gonna just go ahead and move this out of the way. Let's go ahead and cut this. And let's just move it down here in case we want to look at it again. So let's just keep everything at the top. Good. All right. And there you go. And let's go ahead. And we can go ahead, actually. There's a thing here. We don't need the conf the um, we don't need the key binds. We can just go reload config and it does it for us. Now I can um, simply add some opacity by saying background opacity and then equals and then let's just say 0 0.90 okay and let's go ahead and save that and let's recon load this and notice that it, it has a now a 90 percent capacity uh opacity i should say now this is gonna this is definitely a bug and it's been reported but i wanted to show you real quick okay so if i hit if i hit the um add a tab and i go back notice there is a opacity um, a transparent between these two tabs. It may be um, something that uh, is an easy fix, but it is a known bug. Uh, like, like for example, if I just commented this out and save it and then reconfigured, notice that this is back to uh, being opaque. So anyway, that's quick. That's a quick um, bug that's already been reported, and. I'm going to just go ahead and leave it for now. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Oop, nope, over here. Let's go ahead and clear the screen and we're going to uh, list key binds, okay? Because this is interesting, all right? So we have the option to change the key binds to whatever we want. And let, let me just do one real quick, okay? Or add one to be more clear. Okay, so I'm just going to say keybind um, and then equal, and then it's going to be shift um, control CTRL um, plus R equals, and then reload underscore config. Okay, let's go ahead and save that and let's go back over here and let's go ahead and reload the config and let's go ahead and reload, sorry, uh, rerun the list. Um, the list key binds. And now you can see right here, it's actually added my control shift R into the configuration so that you can see what all of the key binds are and you can make adjustments. Now, and it did not take out uh, the reload config. It's still, there is a comma right there. I really like being able to uh, go to the next tab and add and so on. So what's the, what is, I think it's just uh, T right here. Yeah, new tab. So if I hit Control Shift T, 
okay? And then go right and left, the arrow keys, that works great. And that's really cool for me because that's something I generally have to like uh, add into my Tilex every single time. Now, a lot of times I will like make it a little bit more, I don't know, common sense to me. So I might just say Alt plus to add a, um, to add a tab and Alt minus to, uh, to quit the tab or to remove the tab, okay? Regardless, I have really enjoyed looking at this and I'm like just scratching the surface right now. But let me just, let me just go back over here so that you could take um, a better look. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the configuration. So the one thing I will also say is the documentation, top notch, really top notch, okay? So um, there you go. There's option references and you can take a look at everything that's, that you want, including a uh, background. Now, you know what? I am gonna make this a little longer, okay? because I wanna show you something really, co really cool. Um, it will change the palette for certain things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clear the screen and let's not use something that's at like ultra dark already, okay? Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just comment that out and lose something like cat poochine, okay? And let's go ahead over here and now I can hit control and there you go. Now. Notice the palette has um, used all of the Capuchin Mocha um, colors. But let's say I want to just say background equals, and then let's say, I don't know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And let's save that and let's go back over here and let's reload. Notice that it kind of kept the same colors. However, um, the background has been overwritten with with the color 0000. So um, something to play with. Again, all of this stuff is in the uh, in the documentation as well as key bindings and so on. This is really good, guys. I have to say, I'm very impressed by this. Um, yeah. This is going to be something that I'm probably going to use going forward. Yeah, actually, very likely I'm going to be used going forward. So hopefully you liked the fact that I could, you know, that I was able to just install it from source. That was really the point of this <laughs> of this video was to install it from source and to give it a first look. Um, but I hope that if you are a Debian user that you may end up wanting to uh, try something new and this would be something that, uh, yeah, that I would recommend for sure. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and control shift R and we reloaded and it looks very similar. <laughs> it looks very similar to what I had before. Okay, uh, thanks for watching and see you later.